Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. Uh, today, I want to go, well, there's so much to keep up with as far as updates going on right at the moment. Uh, and then I want to go a little bit more in depth into what many people have been wondering, which is timeline. I mean, exactly how much time do we have before we start to see you know, serious, serious events that have been foretold coming to pass. You know, how much time do I have to basically, uh, you know, prepare? How much time before the shit hits the fan, full-fledged, basically? So we have a 6.2 earthquake that's hitting uh, Chile, and it's a strong earthquake, and, you know, as we know, Anywhere along the ring of fire, it's going to be shaking. It is shaking big time. If we look at what, say, Edgar Casey said, South America will probably be the area that gets hit the hardest by major, major, huge earthquakes during the pole shift. And so we do have a 6.2 in Coquimbo, Chile. We have... Five people injured after a 5.8 earthquake hits Japan's Honshu, and stronger earthquakes are possible. And uh, at least five people were injured. It wasn't really um, very deep. It was 10 kilometers. If we look at the USGS, we see that it's lit up big time. And we do have a pretty good size earthquake, 4.7 over in Italy, and that's shallow. That's only a 5.0. Greece has been active. And as we know, the way the energy transfers there, when you have something in Greece, it will kind of flow usually towards Italy as far as the uh, activity of 4.9 in Greece. And if we look back the last... Uh, last two three weeks it's been very active in greece we we do have a decent size one over in india as well 4.6 that's at 6.2 down in chile 76 kilometers deep a 4.5 in chile that's 140 almost 141 kilometers deep 4.7 north mariana islands and there's a 4.3 up in russia or just off the coast of russia and as always, you know, it just boggles the mind how much is going on over in the West Coast between Alaska and California. Every video that I touch on this, it just seems like there's more than the previous video and so much activity building over there. Lots of activity now uh, heading over towards the Yellowstone area. And again, we're going to go into the prophecies in a little bit bigger depth in this video towards the end and uh, there are many that say that this whole area is going to be just so completely changed after everything happens and the pole shift is done so alert raised over eruption threat now at Nevados de Chilan volcano in Chile and as we know there are so many volcanoes going off right now Big increase in Antarctic snowfall. So that flies right in the face of the global warming. And, and now it's like, I think people are waking up, but I mean, there's still so many people that are, you know, completely brainwashed by the mainstream media. Uh, but, you know, the cycle that we're in, sure, humans have a little bit of an influence, but our influence is nothing compared to the influence of the sun. Let's let's be realistic about it. The sun is putting out less energy than it has in 9,500 years. The sun is far more potent than humans and has a far greater effect on the planet than we are. So, and we can see right here, you know, huge increase in the Antarctic snowfall and it's just beginning. So, you know, it's it's so bad and sad that people have been so brainwashed by the mainstream media and I was just talking to another person that's just waking up to what's going on today. And so, you know, I was telling them about the, the fact that we're heading into an ice age. And, you know, now the mainstream, in some cases, will admit to a, a minimum ice age, you know, like a, a Dalton or, 
you know, a monitor, um, you know, something very, very smaller than what we're really heading into, which is, is much bigger than that. And of course, we have the fact that we are having a pole shift go on at the same time. That's, that's you know, that really throws a big curveball into the whole thing. If we only had to be concerned with a mini ice age, then, you know, our troubles, we wouldn't have to worry like, you know, what we really have coming and what we really are seeing come. Big increase in the Antarctic snowfall. So, yeah, there's going to be no denying, even with the mainstream very soon. Record snow, near record cold for Waterloo over the weekend. And we can see, you know, that especially if you're in the Midwest and the upper Midwest, it, uh, very, very cold temperatures. Um, it's going to be a cold summer for you guys. Effingham sets record for April snowfall. And this is Illinois. Largest dust storm in five years descends on Taiwan. Tropical Cyclone Kenny heading towards Fiji. Warnings issued. And I believe this is the third one now. So there's, it's going to be an active season. It's going to be an active season over here in the Atlantic seaboard as well. Bright fireball over Europe. Sonic booms reported. Meteorites possible. There's lots of signs in the skies. Lots of strange sounds. Lots of amazing sights. All sorts of anomalies around the sun. A bright green fireball was observed and, ca and captured on camera as it streaked over Hungary and Croatia. On April 8th, the event lasted for about five seconds and was followed by sonic booms. Yeah, you know, this is not just something that's limited to the Earth. Jupiter's great red spot is shrinking and scientists don't know why. Well, we know why. It's because there's changes going on in the complete solar system. And these changes could even extend out to our galaxy or our section of the galaxy. And one thing I was, I'm going to get into and, you know, I think is a valid thing to to consider is that we know there's other forms of life out there. I mean, there is intelligent forms of life all around us out there. And according to many sources, the Earth has been under quarantine. And certain extraterrestrials have not been allowed to come in because of that quarantine. So how do they communicate to us? Well, they communicate to us through our subconscious often sometimes by abductions but a lot of times they'll give us messages that we would call channeled messages and if they can't get to us physically sometimes they could connect with us mind to mind and i mean this is something that i do believe you know for sure i believe it and I think a lot of the messages we have gotten uh, have been channeled from extraterrestrial interdimensional entities. These are other intelligent beings, intelligent forms of life, some on our 3D plane and some in higher planes. And there definitely are many of them that are trying to communicate with us and let us know what's going on. So, be, you know, because I started paying attention to these things back in the 80s. And back in the 80s, they were talking about entering um, certain highly energetic parts of the galaxy. They were talking about the photon belt and all these different things happening. And at that time, I was extremely skeptical even though I shouldn't have been. I, I mean, I didn't recognize myself that I had been, you know, visited as a child by these entities. I didn't recognize it for what it was. I think perhaps I blocked it out of my mind. Um, but there's many of us that have been contacted by these entities. And, you know, of course, many are going to fear them right off the bat and say they're all demons. But, 
you know, we're using a label again. We're just using a label that other people used way, way back. And, you know, what exactly are demons and what exactly are angels? And so it's up to us to each to decide on our own. And we must test the spirits ourselves and, you know, get a feel for what we think, you know, is good and bad and, and what we feel in our hearts as well as what we judge intellectually the source to be, you know, uh, notice and take note of everything that comes your way. Of course, don't believe anything blindly. You know, don't believe anything just because your parents believed it and your parents' parents believe that, you know, and it's been handed on down. You must judge it for yourself. You know, use your mind and use your heart and test the waters and see what what jives with you, what makes sense to you on all levels. So I digressed a little there, but these sources, many of the channel, channeled sources were saying that all this stuff that we're experiencing now is going to happen. And this is going back to the 80s and sometimes even even farther back than that. So some of it was really accurate. You know, some things maybe not quite so accurate time-wise, but others very, very accurate and very, very on. So I don't discount anything. I'll, I'll look at everything and just basically keep it in mind. But I will not bl blindly believe in anything. And I think we should all, you know, view things in that way. So they had said that we're going to be entering a section of the cosmos that was highly energetic and it was going to trigger an evolutionary response in each of us, in the earth, in the sun, in the planets, and basically anything in that section of the galaxy. There is a central sun for our galaxy and it is the code bringer it is you could you could view it as like if a new computer program is getting downloaded it's getting downloaded onto that mainframe first and then sent out to the other servers and that's kind of what's happening is that the energies are being channeled out into the solar systems that are leading to these what's going to be evolutionary leaps in consciousness first and foremost but also they're going to lead to physical changes so we see physical change in jupiter and it's going to change these energies are going to change everything and they are changing everything and it's part of the big plan so we need to be aware of that. So the massive red sp spot on the face of Jupiter, uh, the, ob the earliest observations started back in the 1600s. And, um, you know, it's basically decreasing by two-thirds. So there are massive changes going on in the entire solar system. This is a profound period of change that we are in. Research helps explain ongoing changes in the geomagnetic field. And this is all about the pole shift. And really, yes, I do believe that we are in a grand solar minimum. Yes, I do believe that we are heading into an ice age. But I also believe that the biggest thing is, is really the pole shift. And really the biggest thing beyond that is that evolutionary leap in consciousness and what's going to come out after this is the next stage in evolution. If you are familiar with the writings of Blavatsky, uh, the theosophists, you know, the theosoph uh, theosophists like Alice Ann Bailey and uh, Wolkett and uh, so many of these others, what they did was they went and blended the East. Eastern traditions with the Western traditions. So they went and they studied everything in the East and then they merged it with the Western mystery tradition and also pulled from other sources like Native American traditions as well and created this synthesis of 
east and west and basically tried to put everything together and uh, very, very interesting what they came up with. And then what we also get from channeled sources like um, Edgar Casey, for instance, and many, many others, uh, they recognize that there's these different root races. Different, and when we talk root races, we're not really talking about the races that you would think. We're talking about different types of uh, humans, really, different types of humanoid beings, and how there's a leap in consciousness each time to like a new root race. And so we are going into another new root race. And what's going to come out is going to, in some ways, resemble some of the superheroes that we have. And I do think that that's something that's subconsciously or superconsciously playing in our minds and manifesting in our media and in our movies. For we are all going to be way more powerful in many ways, way more intuitive, way more psychic. And it's happening now. I have connections with some friends that, um, you know, are very, very advanced in many ways. Um, you know, one of them, she spent 10 years in a monastery. She has active kundalini. Another one has active kundalini. You know, they've, they've been initiated by yogis. And uh, they have very strong psychic abilities. And they just know. Like every time I ever send a text, they know. Or if I just even think about them, they'll know. And and I'll get a text. And it's like, and, and now I know. You know, I could just sense it too. So it's going to come to the point where we will be able to communicate with each other telepathically. And I do believe that is what's coming in the next step of evolution. And we will also be able to see each other's energy fields. I think that is coming. And that is developing in people right now. I used to only be able to see the first layer, the etheric layer, which just looked like heat rising off of a hot road to me, basically. And then I've noticed over the years that I could see um, colors. And it extends out for me now, if I really take my time to zone in, I could usually see three or four layers of, of colors. Um, and it does vary, and, and there's many people that could see more. Barbara Brennan is a tremendously gifted um, psychic, intuitive healer. Um, she's a psychiatrist, and she's written some great books on energy healing. And she could see out 13, 14 layers into the aura, which is amazing. And this is real. This is not woo-woo bullshit. Excuse my language. It's real. It is real. And, and yeah, there's there's many of you out there that will still doubt it. But as time goes on, less and less and more and more are accepting it. And this is all part of the changes that are happening to us as we are being exposed to this evolutionary energy, which is out there in the cosmos, which we are heading into. And also the fact that our magnetosphere is declining rapidly and has declined by 20 percent. And in most of our lifetimes, it will decline by much more than that. And so going back to this, so research is helping to explain ongoing changes in the geomagnetic field. And so one of the big questions is, you know, when did this start? And, you know, what I can find here is that the current decline, probably about 1842, is, is when this current decline started. But like in this article, they see that the magnetic field and has has gone through fluctuations once 400 to 450 AD, another time 700 to 750, and then again 1225 to 1550. And these, these all kind of coordinate with many ice ages. Um, they also found that it all starts in Africa and extends out into the South Atlantic Ocean, and that's where we have the South Atlantic Anomaly. And so... It all stems from what's going on in the core of the Earth. And the core of the Earth, I believe, is, is plasma. And it's, it's a sun like the sun in the sky, in a way. As above, so below, as we have talked about. And so this, 
the changes going on internally, which are being affected by the cosmic energy coming in and triggering the evolutionary process within our own Earth, because Earth is evolving. The Schumann resonance is changing. It's getting higher. And Earth is going to a different place. And the thought is some of us are going to go with it and some of us aren't. It all depends on where we are vibrating at individually. It doesn't believe it doesn't it doesn't matter what your dogma is, because if your dogma hasn't changed you into becoming a person that's full of light and love and compassion and gratitude, you could have whatever dogma you want and it's not going to benefit you. You need to actually change yourself. It's, it's all about the personal change. It's all about developing that love inside you. It's all about being that being of love because that's where the earth is going. The earth is heading into a higher dimension, a higher frequency. And so we must stop being the virus, as I've said so many times, and we must be a beneficial part of the earth itself. Otherwise, you know, we are going to get wiped out just as the white blood uh, cells attack and and attack an invading bacteria or virus and eliminate it, then we'll be eliminated. It's pretty simple. It really is. Not too complicated when we think about it in those terms. Strange anomaly in the Earth's magnetic field could signal a pole reversal. And we know this. And it, it's been 780,000 years. They're supposed to happen between every 200 and 300,000 years. We're way overdue. There have been times when uh, pole reversal has started and it has bounced back and has resisted. And that's where we've been at now for 780,000 years. So this is a huge turning point in the Earth's history. Do we know that this one is going to take hold uh, scientifically? No. If we look at prophecies and what people have seen, then yeah, this time it's going to hold, and this time it's going to be a, a, an actual pole reversal, pole flip. And that's like the last video talked about, which so many people don't believe, uh, crustal displacement is also something we need to be aware of. The Earth's magnetic field is shifting. Poles may flip. This could get bad. And this was really just more about, you know, losing the grid. Because, you know, the pole is rapidly, rapidly moving now. It's, it's increasing in speed. The North Pole shifting, heading into northern Russia. And the South Pole is heading off of Antarctica and heading towards Australia. So when the next pole change places, the consequence for electrical and electronic infrastructure that runs civilization will be dire. The question is when that will happen. And so this is kind of a mainstream point of view, like, holy cow, we're going to lose our grid. Holy cow, we're going to lose our cell phones. Holy cow, you know, our computers are going to crash. What are we going to do? Well, it, it's probably going to be more severe than that. And there's more to consider in your SHTF plan than just that. So, you know, as it does say, a pole reversal is not unprecedented, but solar winds that are going to sweep in, you know, see, that's a difference too. I mean, we are so dependent on all this right now. So who is it going to impact the most? Well, for sure, it's going to impact more people that are technologically dependent than those that are not. So if somebody's living in the uh, Andean mountains, as long as the mountains don't, you know, get totally destroyed from massive earthquakes, uh, and they're living in harmony with nature, and they're just, you know, they're doing their hunting, they're fishing, they're living off the land, they might not notice things quite as much. I mean, they, they might not have as much of an ill effect if they're at a high location and all, then, you know, say somebody that's living in Miami in the middle of a high rise. So the magnetic field is vital to life on Earth, and it's weakened by 15% over the last 200 years. 
And some are saying it's down by 20% now. So it seems to be speeding up. From what I've seen, from 1842 to 2000, we lost 10%. 2000 to 2015, 5%. 2015 to 2018, 5%. It is definitely speeding up. It all gets us into timelines. Well, well, how much time do we have? And that's the big question. That really is the big question. This is out of NASA. Never a straight answer. But here you can see the movement of the North Pole, how it has moved. It's, it's moving faster and faster. And it gets into the polarities that exist as well and shows the different uh, structures of the Earth and how it is during a reversal where we see multiple North and multiple South Poles during a reversal. And I do think that is what is happening now. So again, you know, the question that comes up is how long do we have? Well, this is out of um, Oxford Academic. Extremely rapid directional change during the Matsuyama Brunhez geomagnetic pole reversal. So this was one specific pole reversal that they found out when they looked at it happened extremely rapidly and so because if you listen to a lot of the mainstreams they'll be saying oh we got we got thousands of years you know and you know like this one right here says according to this one review the transit between two opposite polarities does not last longer than about a thousand years and seems to be triggered by a mechanism different from that of characterizing geomagnetic secular variation during intervals of stable polarity. But what they found was that it could be really rapid. So the question is, you know, how rapid? And basically the answer is that it could flip within a human lifetime. Okay. So a human lifetime, what, 70 years? It could flip within 70 years? And they're, they're talking here, um, they're also talking more about the geomagnetic because so much of the mainstream do not believe in crustal displacement. But the crustal displacement part happens immediately thereafter like right right when we get to the magnetic flip then push you know the the interior lines of magnetism want to line up with the new new and south north and south pole so that's when you get the crustal displacement and so what they found is it could happen within a single human lifetime and it has happened in the past in a single human lifetime so being that, well, where do we date the, the start? You know, because we see that it appears that this period of pole shift, if we take the starting point to be when the poles, well, when the, um, the geomagnetic force field that surrounds us, the magnetosphere, started to decline, then that would be like 1842-ish. If we go from the beginning of the decline of the magnetosphere as indicating the beginning of the pole shift. So that would mean that really it could happen kind of any time if that's the case. So it's something for us to just be prepared with. We are, if we're at 20% right now, we haven't lost 20% of the magnetosphere from what I've read, you know, the consequences will be dire when we get down to around 50%. Again, it's hard to say, but we, we, we should probably prepare for it as if it could happen in our lifetime and as if it could happen pretty much any time. Better to be prepared than sorry. So... 
over here you could see the North Pole that is the direction the magnetic north was reversed about a million years ago this map shows how starting about 789,000 years ago the North Pole wandered around Antarctica for several thousand years before flipping 786,000 years ago to the orienta orientation we know today with the pole somewhere in the Arctic and here this we this shows us from 1600 to the present what de, what started to develop over off of africa and has extended so it's, it starts over off of africa and extends out and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and that's the south atlantic anomaly and so this is an area that will probably be uninhabitable at some point as we lose the magnetosphere. And this is what changed my opinion of South America as being a safe point because I was thinking along the lines of Peru or Ecuador or even Panama and Costa Rica, um, but now I'm not. And because this is an area that is already extremely low and going to be so low in protection from cosmic and solar radiation that it might be you know pretty much uninhabitable and I will share with you guys that I remember about a month ago I had a dream and in my dream I was doing a video and in the video I remember saying to everyone that the South Atlantic anomaly is now spread so that its extent goes all the way up to Florida and um, you know, perhaps that will happen. I mean, we could see how much it's expanded in this time frame. And if we are dropping the magnetosphere ever increasingly, just consistently getting faster and faster and faster, then perhaps, you know, it will extend that large in not too much more time. Hard to say. But again, something to keep in mind. And this is out of NOAA. And this again is just a map showing us the movement of the pole in the North Pole and also in the South Pole. And so right now, you know, the South Pole is off of Antarctica. And my feelings is that the North Pole is quite a bit farther over than what they think at the moment. And so one of the scariest things is oxygen escape from the Earth during geomagnetic reversals, implication for mass extinctions. And this is out of um, Science Direct, Earth and Planetary Science Letters. And basically what it is is that if the, if the geomagnetic field weakens enough, basically, we could actually lose oxygen to outer space where the oxygen will leak out into outer space and the Earth will lose that. And they're looking at Mars as an example. And this could possibly be also implicated in extinctions in the past, especially like with the dinosaurs. And you must think about how much oxygen they would have been consuming with the massive size they were as lightning is striking here. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but it seems like we have a strong storm coming in. Hopefully I could get this video done. So that is some scary stuff. Geomagnetic field reversal substantially weakens the protection for the atmosphere. Solar wind energizes more oxygen ions to escape when geomagnetic field is weakened. Oxygen escape may explain the drop of atmospheric level during mass extinction. The causal relationship between reversal and max extinction should be mainly many to one. The simulated oxygen escape rate based on the knowledge of Mars supported their hypothesis. And um, kind of chilling, really. I mean, this is definitely scary stuff. So let's look at the other side of it. Revelation 6.13 and when I saw the Lamb open the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black like sackcloth of goat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth like unripened figs dropping from a tree shaken by a great wind. 
The sky receded like a scroll being rolled up and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Interesting. Very, very interesting because, you know, that's that's a description of a pole shift is what that is. That That's exactly what a pole shift would be like. And as we discussed in yesterday's video, and, and do go ahead and check out that one, um, what's it going to be like when the pole shift? It's going to look like the stars are falling and and the sky is coming down and we look at the Hopis and we are told of the signs the first sign we are told of the coming of the white skinned men like Pahana and Pahana is the good brother the good white skinned brother which some could take to be Christ but not living like Pahana men who took who took who seven took the land that was not theirs and the men who struck their enemies with thunder could take that to be shooting and all you know guns our lands will see the coming of spinning wheels fill with voices in his youth my father saw this prophecy come true with his eyes the white men bringing their families and wagons across the plains a strange beast like a buffalo with great long horns will overrun the land cattle in large number these white feathers saw with his eyes the coming of white men's cattle the lamb will be crossed by snakes of iron and we could take that to be the trains. The land will be crisscrossed by a giant spider web. And you could take that as the internet. You could take that as airplanes. You could take that as chemtrails. The land shall be crisscrossed with rivers of stone that make pictures in the sun. And so we could take that as being our road systems and many other things actually too. You will hear of the sea turning black and many living things dying because of it oil spills and you will see many youth who will wear their hair long like my people come and join the tribal nations to learn their ways and wisdom and that's the ninth and the last sign you will hear of a dwelling place in the heavens above the earth that will fall with a great great crash it will appear as a blue star very soon after this ceremonies of my people will cease and some think that that is a satellite or a space station some are thinking it was the chinese space station Others are talking about Blue Kachina and you know, Nibiru and Planet X. Edgar Casey's prophecies also, you know, Edgar Casey did tens of thousands of readings for people and helped so many people with health ailments that were not getting help from the regular mainstream doctors. He definitely was a gifted, intuitive, psychic healer, and he did make other predictions as well. Some of his prediction timelines have been taken wrong or have been slower to pass, uh, but we should not discount what he's seen. Basically, he said that there were three kinds of changes that should be expected in the future. These included weather patterns around the globe, pole shift, volcanic and earthquake activity increasing. So we need to be aware of all these different prophecies and also just kind of merge them with what we are seeing. I do believe that we all have psychic abilities. We can all tap into the collective consciousness that we all share. I do think that we are getting messages both from realms we might, we might cause, call the angelic realms and then we might also... Uh, be getting messages from perhaps ETs that are out there as well and interdimensionals. And we shouldn't be so fearful of listening to some of these messages. And that's part of the problem is I think that those in power have put that fear in us so we won't listen and so that we will stay under those in powers dominion control and their sway and we will just listen to their brainwashing and just go ahead and do the things they want us to do which is to be good consumers pay our taxes you know be basically subservient and make them rich and wealthy and give them the luxurious life that they have that you know top half of one percent that rules us all those that we call the illuminati the cabal you know, various different names. So they don't want us being contacted by other beings that are going to say, hey, wake up. Something big is coming. And by the way, you guys are slaves and you're being played by half of 1% that's ruling your planet. 
You might want to wake up. You might want to actually take control of your planet back. So Casey did talk about the magnetic field deteriorating. He, uh, he was asked if there would be any great earth changes in 2000, 2001. He answered that there would be a shifting of the poles to her herald the dawning of a new age. According to NOVA, the change began in the South Atlantic Ocean between Africa and South America. That's the South Atlantic anomaly. And so not really saying that, you know, the entire pole shift is going to happen at 2000, 2001. It's the beginning of it. So, yeah, as it goes into, you know, airports and GPS systems need to adjust, which we know that's happening rapidly. It's increasing all the time. And this says Casey never gave specific dates for the Earth changes. He did map out a timeline of events that can be followed. And so what he did say is that there's going to be many, many things. We need to watch Mount, Mount Pele and Mount Edna because he said when both were erupting, then we know the time is, is here and at hand. So when both of them erupt together, there will be about 90 days to evacuate the west coast before the massive flood claims the coastline. So the west coast was like the first that was supposed to be hit in the United States. And then his readings talk about the changes. He says many portions of the East Coast will be disturbed as well as many portions of the West Coast as well as the central portion of the U.S. So he describes how land will appear in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. He also tells how coastal areas will become ocean beds. He describes how many of the battlefields of the present will be ocean, will be the seas, the bays, and the lands over which the new order will carry on their trade with one another. So According to Casey, it's not as dire as some of the other prophecies could be because there will be a remnant. There will be people left over that, that do start. And it sounds like we're not sent completely back to the Stone Age in, in some ways. Casey describes changes along the eastern seaboard, portions of now east coast of New York or New York City itself will in the main disappear. This will be another generation, though. So he says that happens a little bit later. While the southern portions of the Carolinas, Georgia, these will disappear, and this will be much sooner. The waters of the lakes will empty into the Gulf. He also advises that the waterway was being discussed, be prepared to serve as a spillway. So we're talking about basically the Mississippi becoming huge and the Gulf of Mexico is going to attach directly into the Great Lakes. He reveals that Virginia Beach will be spared, and that's perplexing to me. Um, I don't know how that's possible with everything that he else that he shows, but we shall see. He further says that during this time, the Great Lakes emptying in, of the Great Lakes emptying, that portions of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio will be safe havens. In addition, the southern and eastern portions of Canada will survive. The western part of the U.S. and Canada, much of that is to be disturbed in this land, as, of course, in much other lands. He advises his client about California, saying Los Angeles, San Francisco, most of all these will be among those that will be destroyed be before New York even. So, yeah, California goes way before New York. It's important to keep in mind, Casey states in the New York reading that it will be another generation before that happens. Japan will sink into the sea and be gone. The upper portion of Europe will be changed instantaneously with displacements of oceans and rivers. Earthquakes will increase. Casey was specific about certain U.S. regions that will see an increase. In his January 1936 reading, he stated that when Vesuvius or Pele volcanoes become active, the southern coast of California and the areas between Great Salt Lake and the southern portions of Nevada may expect within three months following the same an inundation by the earthquakes, just huge earthquakes. He also stated that the earthquake activity will be much stronger in the southern hemisphere than the northern even. 
And so when we look at our USGS map now, that's where we see all this activity. And it feels like the massive ones, the massive quakes he's talking about, it's it's the build up to that. In Casey's readings about impending solar shift, uh, polar sh shift and climate change, he was very emphatic that nothing was written in stone. During his readings, he constantly reminded that prayer and right thought of consciousness could affect the dire future he saw. He mentions in readings that in the aftermath of the shift, hidden knowledge will be unearthed in Egypt, the Yucatan, and the Bimini sector that will explain Atlantis and can also help humankind advance to the next spiritual level. So there's a silver lining. And again, we could change this, and that's what we've been talking about. The most important thing is where are we spiritually where are we vibrating at and when we say spiritually we're talking about our energetic being and in a way it is still part of your physical being it's just vibrating at a much higher sp rate of speed as above so below and mother shipton and mother shipton was really very very interesting um it's pretty fascinating she warns about cataclysmic events that will result in the almost total annihilation of humanity but there will be a surviving remnant that begins to rebuild a strange new world that awaits it and in some far off distance land some men oh such a tiny band will have to leave their solid mountain span the earth those few to count who survives this and then begins the human race again but not on land already there, but on ocean beds, stark, dry, and bare. Not every soul on earth will die as the dragon's tail goes sweeping by. Not every land on earth will sink, but these will wallow in stench and stink of rotten bodies of beast and man, of vegetation crisped on the land. But the land that rises from the sea will be dry and clean and soft and free of mankind's dirt and therefore be the source of man's new dynasty. And those that live will ever fear the dragon's tail for many a year. Her visions go on even further into the future, and her story suggests the struggling new race will get help from alien visitors. But time erases memory. You think it's strange, but it will be. And before the race is built anew, a silver serpent comes to view and spew out men of like unknown to mingle with the earth now grown, cold from its heat, and these men can enlighten the minds of future man to intermingle and show them how to live and love and thus endow the children with second sight. There's that intuitive ability. A natural thing so that they might grow graceful, humble, and when they do, the golden age will start anew. So there again, what's coming is going to be much better than what we've had. And according to that, it will be led by extraterrestrials perhaps the ones that have been here before left and we have been waiting for in so many traditions and this is zeta talk and and a lot of people including myself would discount them immediately um but over the years it feels like they've gotten more and more accurate and supposedly this communications from zeta reticulans that go through a lady called Nancy Leader and uh, are sending us information about the pole shift. And basically, it, it goes into the same things again. It, it's more of the same. All these sources are agreeing pretty much. And here, you know, you're talking about, again, you know, things are going to be pretty wiped out for the most part. And civilization will start anew and... Um, it's going to be a much more wise civilization this time. And here we have a quick look at, now this is a composite source future map of the U.S., which is taking in many sources like Casey and Shipton and uh, Gordon Michael Scallion, who's another, another psychic, some remote viewers as well as others, saying this is what's going to be left. So as we could see, we're going to have basically an eastern United States and more of a midwestern one with the west pretty much gone, you know, for the most part. And, you know, again, you have to judge that for yourself. You really do. You have to listen to your inner voice. 
because your inner voice might have you going somewhere that might seem a little strange, but it's up to you to decide, you know, what are you going to do? How soon are you going to, to do it? When, when are you going to move? When you are, or are you going, if you're able to, if you're financially able, like I know so many people and it's just hitting me as obvious because I'm talking to people and they're saying, well, yeah, I'm going to look at property up in North Carolina and the mountains. And I'm thinking in my head, uh-huh. Yeah, I know why you're doing that. You know, even though you don't maybe necessarily know why you're doing it, your higher self, the collective consciousness, whatever you want to call it, you're being guided to do that, you know, because you're here in Florida or, you know, perhaps you're out there in L.A. And there's a whisper and and you're you're just being guided. You're being guided to what's going to be a safe zone. And so... It's really happening in, in a lot of people now. So many people are waking up. So when are you going to do it? it? It's up to you. You know, it, ultimately, it's up to you. How quick are things going to happen? You have to listen to your own intuition. If you're able to, if you are financially able to, it would be nice to um, maybe have a second home in an area that is going to be a perceived safe zone. So if you're unable to, then... You know, you, you're going to have to figure out what works for you. I do know people that have sold their houses or if they were renting, they've they've saved up enough money now to go ahead and buy an RV and they're living out of that RV and they can move that RV anywhere they want to. So that is another, well, that might be another part of why there's such a huge amount of people doing that now. Think of the, of the tiny house movement. So many of those tiny houses are mobile. And maybe these people are tapping into something that they know is coming. And they don't even recognize it consciously yet. But there are a ton of people living out of vans now. That's a huge subculture. The tiny house culture. There's a ton of people uh, living and buying RVs and living out of them now. Those are all mobile. They're going to be ready to go wherever they need to go when the you know start really stuff starts to really flow. And also, you know, there's a lot of people being drawn to the mountains, and I prefer the coast to the mountains. Uh, but when the time comes, you know, to the mountains, we'll head. It's just that simple. And I'm just trying to be as connected to source as I can to get that intuition. And really keep my eyes open and really check all the sources. So that is what I am doing. So again, ultimately, it's up to you. And ultimately, as Edgar Casey said, it's about us and our consciousness. So the most important thing really is growing as a person, as a being, recognizing that what's happening here is something that is truly spiritual in origin. Because this is all about remaking this world into a more positive vision. It's all about becoming a brotherhood of mankind again. It's about finding balance. You know, our society has become a a very aggressive, patriarchal, dominant, left brain, dominant society that is totally out of harmony with nature and Mother Earth. And we need to find our own balance again. We need to bring things into equilibrium again. We need to balance the male and female energies again. And perhaps it's, it's too late for this society on the whole. And so it's going to be started anew with a remnant, a seed and grown into a new beautiful golden age but the most important thing of all is where are you where is your heart you know it's time for us to throw away our dogmatic fundamentalism and whether that is a political one of left versus right ideology you know republican versus democrat ideology whether it's you know a religious one whatever it is It's time to be a little bit more open-minded. It's time to throw away dogma and fundamentalism and to recognize the oneness and the wholeness because what we're moving into is something called unity consciousness. 
And that is what the new earth is going to embrace. We're going into a golden age. We've been living in the Kali Yuga. We've been living in a dark age. We might think we're technologically advanced, but spiritually, no, we're not so advanced. And we have a lot to learn from those that came before us. We have a lot to learn from the indigenous peoples and those that live in harmony with the earth, those that are non-judgmental. And there is so much to learn from them, my friends, and so much to let go. Number one, let go of your fear. Let go of judgment. Let go of labeling. Let go of name calling. Whether it's, you know, oh, left is liberal this or conservative whatever. Just let it go. Just let it go. As we teach in meditation, when something pops up and it's not something pleasant, just watch it flow away down the stream and let it go. It will not serve you. And that's part of what we must do is we must break away, break apart from the negative conditioning that has kept us in this fight or flight world. And we will do it. We will definitely do it together. This evolutionary energy arts family is one of those seeds that's going to grow and blossom and help to bring in this new golden age. And I thank you guys so much for being part of the family. Please do thumbs up and help support the family and the channel and share with as many people as possible again informed people won't be panicking when the shit hits the fan share as much as possible and subscribe if you haven't and click the bell for new updates i thank you guys so very much i send you all my love and i wish the best for you and yours and i want to hear your comments share let's let's grow together in this thank you so much take care my friends